Hi, this is Dennis from A Fresh Endeavor and Chef Demick Chefs, and today I'm going to be taking a couple uh, lamb racks and cutting them down into double lamb chops. So let's get started. These are cleaned out pretty well. Uh, this is exactly how I bought them. The only thing I've done is wash them and dry them off a little bit. So we have to remove the silver skin. That's one thing. But first I'm going to take down these chops with just a little bit more. You never know how you're going to get them when. But I want them there's a little bit excess uh, fat running through here and I also want to clean them up a tiny bit and I'll explain what that means in a minute. For plating presentation you're going to understand exactly what he's doing and gives you a whole new way to show off a beautiful cut like a um, lamb chop. So basically all you do is you kind of go in between uh, you go to each side and you cut out a little bit more. You don't have to. Uh, you could have just taken it just the way it is and, and cut the silver skin off, which I'm going to show you in a minute. A little bit more over here. Visual measuring, very important. Well, while I have a cat over here drinking water, who doesn't seem to want to move? So we're going to work around the kitty cat. All right, so let's do this. The first thing you're going to do is get that out of there. You just take the knife like this and you can clean up the bones. Because it's not going to hurt anything other than presentation-wise. You, when you, uh, when you have bones like this and they're not clean, they sometimes they can look a little ratty after, after you, uh, you cook. Perfectly well. These are going to be so good. Such a treat. And I'm taking them down a little further. Why? Because I feel like it. Okay. Now why don't you turn that around to the bottom part in just a second so they can see the other angle on this guy. Um, I will, and I will do that shortly. But I want to take, I want to finish these bones so I don't forget to do them. Always a good thing. Okay. Okay, now Kitty's walking by my feet. But is not visible. I think he's getting bored with us. We should be so lucky. He's a great cat. But he has but at seventeen he's got a mind of his own. Or a lack of mind of his <laughs> own. <laughs> hey. He's, he's, he's a sweet boy, we love him dearly. Alright. So anyhow, a little bit more cleaning on this with that. This looks fine. This right here, the little chine on the end, you can't really do anything about that. But what you can do, and you should do, basically you have to do, you have to get rid of the silver skin. Silver skin is just as it sounds. It's that silvery piece of fibrous skin that runs along uh, many pieces of meat. It's connective tissue. And unfortunately, doesn't really tenderize. Yeah, it does not tenderize So you can end up with all. tough spots in places, that stuff where you can chew for 10 minutes and it's not going anywhere. So we like to take that off, remove it, and you can do this with pork tenderloin, um, certain cuts of beef. Just get rid of it. Now, there's always, it seems like there's always some uh, fat. Sometimes there's fat over it. You don't necessarily want to get rid of all the fat. Because the fat, fat's kind of a good thing. Fat can be this. your flavor. Fat can be your, um, hey, it keeps it from drying out. Ooh, good piece. So that's there. There's also something very satisfying about peeling silver skin. Don't ask me why. Probably a personal issue with me, but... Hey. It's, I, I kind of enjoy it. I have to stay really focused on it. That's why I'm not talking quite as much with this because you you don't want to take chances with that. Uh, you want to get you want to get it off there, but you don't 
one thing you do not want to do is take too much of the meat or you don't want to have it jump back up on you and cut yourself. So, And this is when you definitely want your knife to be sharp, usually with a point on it like that, so you can get underneath with the thinnest possible removal of the now, skin. That's a little bit on the end right there. I will take that off and a little bit of that on the bottom and I think that's pretty much it. The rest, is, the rest in there is fat. And this fat right here, I'm not touching, other than to do that. I knew as soon as he said he wasn't touching, he was going to slice a piece yeah. off. Now, what, what I'm going to do after that is I'm going to stand this up. I want to get four lamb chops out of this. So count the bones, you've got eight. And sometimes you'll have a, like a little one that runs off on the edge there. You don't want to use that one. So I'm going to cut in between. I'm gonna cut in between, and when you cut, when you cut uh, through here, the the funny thing is, if you cut straight through, you're not gonna get through. For some reason, the bones are offset a little bit here, so you have to kind of work your way around. And take your time with that. There's no reason to rush this process, especially if you're just starting it. So there's one, there's one, and I'm going two bones here. There's another, and right here. And sometimes you'll get some that are a little bit bigger than others. Now, I've seen people where they'll just leave it like this. No, uh, we don't like that. Bring the camera over here. It's like some kind of odd bird. So yeah. So anyhow, I take I what I do is here is I've got two, and one of them's coming out. So I pick the one that I think is the best one to take out and I remove it. Now to remove it, you kind of just have to work around a little bit. You want to, you, you have to save the meat. So sometimes you can take it and just kind of break it a little bit. Other times you get, you just have to work around it the best that you can. And there's one out. So I'm going to put this back together here, and that... Look at how pretty that, that is. That is a double lamb chop, and it only has one of the chops there touching it. This one here, I think I'm going to use the one on the inside. So I go through here. Just like clay is a medium, it's like you look in clay or marble to see what what's going to be in there and that's how you decide to cut your lamb chop figure out what's going to be the best end product and what you see in it so this is out so you just pull that there like that and that's another one there and I'll tell you and I'll tell you why I, I like this I like it I'm gonna take the one on the outside this one is gonna come right out I can, I that's a smaller one it. It's not as attached. I can tell. The end you the want ribs. the ones that are as, as, as attached as possible so you don't lose them. So you don't lose that thing and have it just kind of bounce off. There we go. So that's out. This one's going to be a little bit larger. And there's, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing you can do with that because. Uh, you know, you're dealing, you're dealing with, uh, you're dealing with animals that everything isn't perfect. Anatomy follows a pattern. You definitely have a um, blueprint, but once you get in there, you just have to understand you may run into some obstacles, and that's fine. Work with it. Get to know it. little bit left on there but not bad not that bad uh, now I'm just gonna take this right here I just want to clean that up a little so that when it's actually cooking it, it looks as much like the other ones as possible now we have four double lamb chops here that I like double lamb chops because they're nice and thick they're easy to grill it's a lot easier that way thank you for watching I really appreciate it.
Bye-bye now.